give you anything. <laughs> this next question is going to sound bizarre, but just stick with me. Um, okay. Does Rambeer Kapoor smile at home? Well, I woke up this morning from a reoccurring dream. Hi. Hello. Hi. How, how are, are you? you? Good. How are you? Good. Looking beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Going strong. Last interview of the day. <laughs> wow. Well, appreciate you chatting with us. No. Thank you so much for doing this. How are you? It's your last interview of the day. You've been doing this all day long. How, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not too repetitive. Okay. Not okay. too stale. Okay. So good. It's not full, not half. No, no, no. It's half. Up till your knees. Knees? Knees. You come chasing rabbits. Be careful what you find. The truth you seek might just blow right out. In the teaser, uh, the allegory of the scorpion and the frog was mentioned. And so I was wondering, between you and Rambeer, who's the scorpion, who's the frog? Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Why don't you guess? <laughs> so actually, in the movie, who's the scorpion, who's the frog? I know, if I tell you that, then who's going to watch the movie? We will. <laughs> but I can't give that away. But I think it's, it's left to the viewer's imagination for now. Okay. Who okay. do you think is the scorpion and who do you think is the frog? I think you're the scorpion and the frog. Oh. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we won't know okay. until we see the film. Okay. <laughs> well, after after we watched the the trailer, there was definitely a lot of discussion and debate about, you know, who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, what's going on here, all of that. But the the one thing that we could agree on was that it's really interesting that the film is addressing the subject of domestic abuse through the lens of a dark comedy. With that in mind, what are you hoping the audience will get from watching the movie? Well, of course, I think it's safe to say there's a good message in the film, um, which um, there is a takeaway, a very strong takeaway. But, you know, the comedy is not really comedy... Uh, like ha ha she said a funny line it's not like oh my god they're so intelligent it's about like okay it's a comedy of errors and it's like this world and these characters that are really trying to get a hold of things and trying to control the situation but not managing to deeply failing at it and because of that we as an audience when you watch it you just laugh and you find it really endearing and funny mm. but What's tricky with the dark comedy is to manage the darkness along with the comedy because at no point do you want to be insensitive um, right. to, to a very important subject yeah. like domestic abuse. So we've been extremely careful of that because that mm, would be totally like working against what the ultimate goal of the movie is which is to give an extremely strong, poignant, important message to both parties, men and women. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I noticed in the trailers that you and uh, Vijay Varma, there's a lot of physical stuff going on. Uh, I was wondering, while shooting, how many times did you guys apologize to each other? <laughs> <laughs> to be very honest, I apologized to him a lot and he was always like, of course, extremely chivalrous and really, really like a big trooper and like everything was done with utmost safety. But because he was tied to the chair and we're like dunking his face in water and then there's like a lot of stuff going on around which is like, not really pleasant and it's like torture but he was really cool about it and in fact sometimes he was playing it up so much in the moment that I actually thought that we were physically harming him and I'm like listen guys 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 we can't keep doing this take again and again like you know he's really uncomfortable and he's like no I'm acting like that's what we're supposed to do in the moment and I'm like okay fine I'm really sorry but it makes me really uncomfortable yeah, so I think I was the, definitely the one to say sorry most times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you and, and your your mom in the movie, you guys have a really interesting relationship. On a scale of one to toxic, how toxic is your relationship with your mom in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, w I was not expecting that on a scale of one to toxic. But I don't think it's toxic. I think it's, um, it's definitely intertwined, like... A little like sometimes it's a like role reversal where you really don't know who the mother is in the dynamic and who's making more sense or who is who's being the more calm or sensible one okay so i would say maybe like a four uh, okay. okay all right watching the trailer a couple more times it, it reminded me how you have one of the most expressive faces of all time and so <laughs> it made me wonder if you know while you're acting 
Is it all just natural or do you have like a catalog? Oh, shopping catalog of faces that you show the director. Like, would you like page 32? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have a catalog. I've been building it for the last 10 years. Uh, no, none of that. None of that. That's the thing I love about being an actor. That I just, I, to, I, I get to live a new life every day on a film set. And that's something that I really look forward to. Um, just totally getting lost when the camera is rolling. And, you know, fortunately, my co-star, Chef Ali, who plays my mom in the film, she is the exact same person. She gets so lost in the take that she doesn't even realize she's doing things like she'll drop the cup and pick it up and throw it and she'll say some line and she'll do that because it's all happening really like in real time for her and she's really like breathing through the shot. And I'm very much like that as an actor as well. Like I don't even like to rehearse um, mm. because I'm like, okay, no, no, no. I mean, I may, may overdo it or I may just sort of live the moment out too much. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I really like to breathe through the shot and live it through the shot. That's why I love takes that go on forever and ever. <laughs> so uh, talking about like doing different roles and, and really enjoying that, I've noticed that at least for us, every time we've watched you in different movies, you're you're always like playing a different type of character. So how is this character different or unique from other characters that you've played to date? Well, I think she's definitely the most naive slash optimistic character that I've played um, that believes that maybe a lot can be achieved with just not doing anything about it, <laughs> just keeping quiet and, uh, and like sort of going through the beats. But also because of... Um, which I'm guessing you've understood through the trailer, she's not just a character that has a couple of maybe the white shades. She does cross over onto the grey, maybe even the black. Mm. Um, and that's what I enjoyed possibly the most because it's like, it just shows how a circumstance can really, really change a person for better or for worse. Then it's really up to the person how they how they choose to lead their life. Is Jasmine K. Irene a scorpion or a frog? Oh, definitely a frog. Why? Why is it a frog? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it a frog? <laughs> um, I'm not sure she'll let a scorpion sit on her back, but basically she's a lovely, gentle soul uh, <laughs> with a great, like a lovely heart and beautiful energy. And yeah, she's definitely not the scorpion. Okay. <laughs> okay. Obviously now you have your own production company and, and you produced this film. How is working on the other side of the camera change the way you view the whole filmmaking process, if at all? Oh, totally different. Being an actor is, of course, extremely rewarding, but it's very singular. You know, mm, you're, you're yeah. thinking only about yourself and your your input and what is my character thinking and how is my moment, what is... It can get a bit self-involving, um, although I've tried to do all of that all these years with having an lens out for like, like it all matters in the bigger picture it has to matter it doesn't have to matter about but still you're still arriving onto set thinking about yourself and this is the first time as a producer that i was involved in the making process from the beginning of the journey which is script approval and then working on the script you know putting together the whole technician team locations sets like getting involved in every little aspect um not like my word is the last word but giving my opinion on it if you know if need be uh, because at the end of the day we're all catering to one vision and that's the director's vision and trying to make that vision come to life but filmmaking is a democracy like everybody sort of gives their inputs and puts puts it together and everybody in their department gives their instincts and of what's right and you know what's working and what's not working until the very end moment very last moment it's a constant gamble you mm -hmm. never really know what's going to work but you just go with your instinct and especially now in the stage where we're presenting the film to the world you know putting the teaser together putting the trailer together, putting all the song units together which is going to start rolling out from next week. I've had to be involved in all of that like if there's like um, one extra shot or one shot that's not working or we need to move the soundtrack a little down, a little up and we need to maybe energize here, drop down there. I've never had to get involved in any of this so I'm learning so much, I'm, I'm gaining so much more, so much more confidence to maybe do this again once again and I think that's the dream to build my production house and and have talent feel confident enough to come to me with their material and trust me with their material so that I can bring that to life. What made Darlings specifically the first film for you to be done by Eternal Sunshine? And how did you come up with that name, Eternal Sunshine? I don't know what about Darlings did it. I think the fact that it was such a unique slash brave slash important slash fresh story, mm -hmm. um, uh, dark comedy, unique genre, real world, beautiful message, I think, all of those things 
new director want to give new director back new talent mm-hmm. all these things sort of added up into darlings being my first film as a product uh, as a producer and eternal sunshine basically i mean eternal sunshine of the spotless mind is one of my favorite films okay. i mean I, i i couldn't call it spotless mind productions so i called it eternal <laughs> sunshine productions <laughs> <laughs> because spotless mind is just that means nothing <laughs> um, but what i also feel like just kind of very casually worked out was like i resonate with the two words eternal and sunshine i believe movies cinema content is eternal like they just live on for life and i love the feeling of sunshine the warmth the fuzziness the the brightness the hope the positivity mm-hmm. and i believe like movies have that power in your on in your life like they can really change somebody's life so the way movies make me feel really warm and lovely that's the way sunshine makes me feel so eternal sunshine gotcha gotcha with darlings there's definitely a sense of it being you know different and and quirky like is this kind of the vein that you want to be going in for future productions or what would you like to do next uh for producing well i think this is the kind of stories that i do understand better maybe like i'm not sure i understand like an action genre like as strongly or as like instinctively as i do maybe like with a slice of life kind of film or a beautiful story about a mother or a daughter or a child and his dog like i mean it's just beautiful stories that touch your heart and touch your soul um and that entertain you and that like give you a good like night watch with your partner being like okay i we watched a good movie um or you know sitting with your sister and you watch a beautiful movie about two sisters like it's just about bringing real stories to life and uh, having a bit of a, a, a bit of a unique sort of twist to it as well like i would like to tell a thriller mm-hmm. um as well but in my opinion the kind of movies eternal sunshine will produce um or the content eternal sunshine will produce um should have some sort of life learning story experience or something at the end of it because i feel like cinema is a great way for you to make a point so we should use the medium to make a good point otherwise it's just like a like a reality tv show which i'm not sure uh, <laughs> really gives you anything <laughs> this next question is going to sound bizarre but just stick with me um okay. does rambeer kapoor smile at home now the reason i ask is because <laughs> if you google search rambeer and alia on average like most of the photos he looks so serious and i'm like does this guy ever <laughs> smile <laughs> Oh, I feel so bad. Basically, he has these like sunken eyes, Ranbir, which makes him look like either he's serious or he's sad. But actually, that is his face. So very often, people say that to me when I have this like expression where I'm like on my phone and I'm like, and they're like, "What happened? Is everything okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, everything's fine. What happened?" They're like, no, it just looks like you're having like a really tough moment. So I'm like, "No, no, that's my focus face. Like, I have to focus while frowning. Like, I can't help it." So even while I'm in a departmental store and I'm shopping at Zara or whatever, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> and my sister's like, "Why do you look so troubled?" So anyway, that's Ranbir's beautiful, but. a bit serious face. Yeah. So yes, to answer your question, he's always smiling and he's always laughing. But maybe you can say that I'm the one who makes him smile and makes him laugh. So maybe that's why he's uh only smiling with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are definitely a super cute couple and congratulations as well uh on your pregnancy. Yes, congratulations. Yes. Yeah. I was wondering, you know, now that you're becoming a mother, is that going to affect kind of what film roles you might want to do going forward or not at all? I don't think so. Um but I guess I won't know, right? Until <laughs> until, until it happens. Later. That's very <laughs> honest. Until it yeah. Happens. That's fair. Yeah, that's but honest. But I definitely feel I have a new tool to emote because I definitely know what's going to make me cry at the drop of a hat mm-hmm. <laughs> so i think i have a new superpower <laughs> for sure hopefully i pronounced this correctly did any product placements from eda mama or your handbag yes. line did they make it into the film no no <laughs> <laughs> now that i think of it i should have <laughs> why didn't i place oh yeah there was no No, there was no moment for no, there was no moment to play said. Okay. I was just curious. <laughs> okay, uh my last question is uh can you give us any scoop on Netflix's Heart of Stone and can you verify if Gal Gadot really looks that amazing in the morning? Almost 100% she looks that amazing in the morning, <laughs> afternoon, evening and night put together. She is an absolutely like go she's absolutely gorgeous from head to toe. 
on the outside and the inside like possibly the most beautiful positive warm energy that i have ever interacted with in my life and which is possibly why she's such a massive star because people just really connect with that and yeah shooting or uh, working on heart of stone was fabulous i made some new friends tom harper jamie donin gal gado it's not too bad not too bad to make new friends like that <laughs> yeah uh, and i also had it was my first time shooting pregnant shooting an action film pregnant wow. shooting an action film in the middle of london so all of that happened um but thanks to the beautiful team and netflix and everyone on the team like they made me feel so 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 comfy and even the days that i was missing my dal chawal because i was away from home they made sure that i had that to eat so yeah i i feel very very warm and happy with those all those memories with netflix being more and more global i'm seeing so many more indian stars pop up in american mm-hmm. stuff will we see you do a lot more american films i hope so I mean that is the plan the plan is to kind of um, potter all around the world and do all kinds of movies possible so everyone so everyone knows my name <laughs> <laughs> That's all our questions yeah. thank you so much for your time really appreciate it Thank you so much thank you so much I had a great time thank you Yeah you got you have a good night sleep well <laughs> <laughs> Bye <laughs>